Welcome to another meeting of the Lorain County Commissioners broadcast exclusively on your Lorain County Community College Education Station. The Lorain County Commissioners cordially invite you to see the meetings live and in person every Thursday morning. The meetings are located in the Lorain County Administration Building located at 226 Middle Avenue in downtown Elyria. The meetings start at 9.30 a.m. on most weeks. Now, enjoy the meeting. Okay, we can all uh, rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning. <coughs> Today I'll kind of go back to Harry Truman. No government is perfect. One of the chief virtues of a democracy, however, is that it defects are always visible and under democratic processes can be pointed out and corrected. And that was in 1947. Oh, Madam Clerk. Okay, there are no scheduled appointments this morning under resolutions. I need a motion to approve the Job and Family Services Bills for payment. So moved. Second. Discussion? Mrs. Bassey? Aye. Mrs. Blair? Aye. Mr. Moore? Aye. There are no investments this morning. Appropriations. So moved. Second. Discussion? Mrs. Blair? Aye. Mr. Moore? Aye. Mrs. Bassey? Aye. Transfers? So moved. Second. Discussion? Mrs. Bassey? Aye. Mrs. Blair? Aye. Mr. Moore? Aye. Under advances, there is one repayment of an advance for $20,000 from the Children and Family Council back to the general fund. So, so moved. Second. Discussion? Mrs. Bassey? Aye. Mr. Moore? Aye. Mrs. Blair? Aye. Requisitions? So moved. Second. Discussion? Mrs. Blair? Aye. Mr. Moore? Aye. Mrs. Bassey? Aye. Travel expenses? So moved. Second. Discussion? Mrs. Bassey? Aye. Mr. Moore? Aye. Mrs. Blair? Aye. Approving bills for payment? So moved. Second. Discussion? Mr. Moore? Aye. Mrs. Blair? Aye. Mrs. Vassey? Aye. I'd like to authorize various personal actions as indicated by the assembly for employees within the jurisdiction of Loring County Commissioners. There was only one on there, wasn't there? Mm -hmm. So moved. Second. Second. Discussion? Mrs. Blair? Aye. Mrs. Vassey? Aye. Mr. Moore? Aye. <coughs> And the commissioners, item number 10, need to award a contract to Elbert Building Company of Elyria, Ohio, in the amount of $8,160 for the demolition of buildings located at 209 Broad Street, Elyria, Ohio. And I'd like to issue a notice to proceed, effective October 15, 2002. This was the lowest and most responsive bid received, complying with specifications. So moved. Second, but I... Discussion? I believe, yeah. Uh, since this was such a low bid compared to some of the others, did that include everything, like filling the basement in and packing it? Excellent question, Commissioner. I had the very same questions. That's why they're excellent. <laughs> uh, I was, I was. Uh, we estimated this to be over fifteen thousand. That's why we bid it in the first place. Uh, uh, surprisingly, we had two bids that were under fifteen thousand. Uh, this being the lowest bid, um, we have done due diligence. It does include. Uh, removing the foundation walls and backfilling with the proper uh, mix uh, and uh, grade of backfill that's needed for the proper compaction. It's all all with spec in the package. Uh, so my answer to your question is uh, we're, we're going to get a very good job. It's just that the cost came in low. Well, that was a, a great difference there. That from thirty-one thousand dropped down to eight thousand. It was it was significant. Uh, we'll we'll keep an eye on it. Uh, but uh, everything was spec for, for, the, for the removal of the foundation walls, the compaction, the backfill was all on the spec. But we'll keep a good eye on it. But uh, uh, I think that we're, we just, right now, somebody just wanted the business. And, and, uh, OK, one other thing. Press. I'd like to amend the resolution to include not to exceed 8,160,000. Mr. 
Oh, I, I think that would be great. include, yeah. not sure. to exceed the amount that uh, was quoted. Great. And since I'm the mover of the motion, that's uh, entirely <coughs> agreeable to me. Any more discussion? Mrs. Blair? Aye. Mrs. Vassie? Aye. Mr. Moore? Aye. I have number 11, we need to notify the Lorraine County Safe Harbor Incorporated of doing business as the Genesis House, a shelter for victims of domestic violence, that they are eligible for release of funds in the estimated amount of $78,000 collected as part of marriage license fees and annulments, divorces or disillusions fees pursuant to Ohio Revised Code sections 2303.201 and 3113.33 through 3113.39. So moved. Second. Discussion? <coughs> Mrs. Blair? Aye. Mrs. Vassie? Aye. Mr. Moore? Aye. Number 12, to accept the amounts and rates as determined by the Budget Commission and authorize the necessary tax levies and approve the alternative method, <coughs> formula, and allocation of the United, excuse me, undivided local government fund and the Undivided Local Government Revenue Assistance Funds and certified to the County Auditor for the year 2003. So moved. Second. Discussion? Mrs. Vassie? Aye. Mrs. Blair? Aye. Mr. Moore? Aye. Under Children and Families Council, number 13, we need to accept $20,000 from the Lorraine County Children and Families Council as partial repayment toward the advance received from the general fund on September 13, 2002 in the amount of $44,626.95 and grant forgiveness on the remaining balance of $24,626.95. So moved. I'll second. <coughs> Discussion? Jim. Uh, Commissioner, uh, this is a uh, uh, Warren Marina Cross Post Department. Uh, for the record, I'd like to point out that we were able to place $958,045 into the hands of needy recipients in the community, and we received $54,534 in admin money while we were doing that. However, we came up a little bit short on the admin money, uh, and that's why we're asking for some forgiveness. We were able to pay most of the advance. Uh, this represents uh, about 2% uh, that the county put in to leverage almost a million dollars for, for county residents, and I think it's a very worthy and necessary expenditure of county funds. Thank you, sir. Mr. Moore? Aye. Mrs. Blair? Aye. Mrs. Vassie? Aye. <clears throat> Under the Community Development Department, number 14, we have to award contract to Trisco Systems Incorporated of Lima, Ohio, in the amount of $31,505 for the exterior renovation of the Community Development Department at 216 Third Street, Larry, Ohio. This was the lowest and most responsive bid received complying with specifications. We'd also like to issue a notice to proceed after following the legal review of the contract, auditor's acknowledgement of funds, and a purchase order will be issued. The Community Development Department Director has reviewed and recommends approval. Funds are available in the Capital Improvements Account. So moved. Second. Discussion? Yeah. Was there any local people, Jim? Did any local? I can't respond to that, Commissioner. I, I didn't review the bid package. Uh, that was done uh, over at uh, Community Development. Kelly, would you have known? Yeah, that's fine. Good morning. Good morning, um, Kelly. I know there were three bidders all together, and I know one of them was Burge Builders, and I cannot recall what the, what the third bill, um, contractor was. Oh, were they close? Did we make sure that they're within our... Uh, yeah, they're within the procurement guidelines. The 3% that we have? Did they, yes. So did, could we have gone with the local preference <clears throat> or no? No, not be, not with this not with this particular case. No. Because of, it's used with federal dollars and we can't. Use, oh, we, we can't, can't do that with federal. Okay. So mm -hmm. this is being spent with federal dollars? Yes. No. No, I didn't think so. No, well, this is general fund right. money. Oh, well, since it's general fund money then. I'm sorry. I missed both on that. Should we uh, <laughs> find out first before we act on it? Will you readdress the question, please, Commissioner? Why don't we do this? Can you find out who the other two bids were for me? We can just hold this until we get those answers. So I, you can, I can provide those to you um, as soon minutes. as I go back to the office. Sure. Well, I'm going to be needing an exec under my business anyway, so uh, we'll have a little bit of opportunity to revisit this issue. Okay. okay. I'd just like to see what the other, if there was only, what you're saying, there's only three bids on this project? There were three bids. Okay. Yeah. I'd just like to see the other two bids. Okay. And, okay. Uh, I have a que uh, question, too. I think that this, if it comes back on the rest, uh, on the, agenda here well, or if we today. vote on it no we do it today all right no. well then i'd like to put in uh, not to exclude 
in here to not, uh, to, not exceed. to exceed. I'm sorry. Okay. How will we come back to it? How's that? Yeah, and just this point of information, we're up to two, over two hundred and eighty seven thousand dollars in this building. Two hundred and eighty seven thousand? Yep, this brings it up to about two hundred and eighty seven thousand dollars that we put into the building. This is a economic development building. <clears throat> Actually it's two hundred and eighty seven, six hundred and eleven bucks. That's 57 bucks a square foot cheaper than the Justice Center at 160. I'm happy with that price. <laughs> so, can we bring this up again? Can we put this on hold? I'll make my, do I have to do a motion to put this? I think we can just uh, go by and come back to it, Madam Clerk. Is that acceptable? Okay, then I'll, uh, right now. okay, we'll tell you what. It may be cheaper, Dave, I have to tell you, but it's a much smaller building. 5,000 square feet. I can't even build a house for $57 a square feet. <laughs> so, that's, that's very, very, economical for the taxpayers, especially for job creations. So I don't have a problem at two hundred and eighty seven thousand. That's including furniture purchases, grant money, everything mm, else. I don't think so. Well, that's the that's the report I got. We okay. can talk some more when it comes back. <laughs> okay, item number fifteen. We have to approve the fiscal year two thousand two small cities formula grant agreement in the amount of four hundred forty seven thousand dollars. The community development director and county prosecutor's office have reviewed and recommends approval. So moved. Okay. <clears throat> Discussion? Mrs. Bassey? Aye. Mrs. Blair? Aye. Mr. Moore? Aye. At number 16, I'd like to issue a notice to proceed letter to R.A. Joseph Construction Incorporated of Avon, Ohio, for the City of Avon Lake Handicapped Curb Ramps, a CDBG funded project. Uh, the notice is effective October 15, 2002. The contract was awarded by resolution number 02695, adopted September 5, 2002. So moved. Second. <clears throat> Discussion? Mrs. Vassey? Aye. Mrs. Blair? Aye. Mr. Moore? Aye. <clears throat> Under Job and Family Services, the Child Support Enforcement Agency number 17, need to approve and enter into a 4D service contract amendment number one between Lorraine County Child Support Enforcement Agency and the Lorraine County Clerk of Courts. The amendment will increase the unit rate from $7.50 per unit to $9.65 per unit and decrease the maximum reimbursable units from $10,000 to $9,300. The original contract value of $75,000, which was $25,500 in non-federal matching funds and $49,500 in federal matching funds remains unchanged. All other provisions of the contract signed with January 24, 2002 was approved by resolution number 02-58 remain in effect. I authorize the president or vice president to execute on behalf of the board. I'll so move. <clears throat> I'll second. <clears throat> Discussion? <clears throat> Mrs. Blair? Aye. Mr. Moore? Aye. Mrs. Bassey? Aye. Under the Sheriff's Department, item number 18, I need to approve a change order number two to Integrator.com of Noblesville, Indiana for the Lorraine County Correctional Facility Systems and Equipment Alterations Project. Change order number two is for the following. Number one, is for the removal of the audio level monitoring system from the overall security control system. Number two, to add four ceiling monitor mounts to control one. Number three, add two 19-inch high-resolution monitors with two digital quad processors. This represents a change in the scope of work and does not change the contract amount. The sheriff is in agreement with and recommends approval. I'd like to authorize the president or vice president to execute on behalf of the board. That's a, I'll also move just I'll to get discussion. Second. Discussion? I have, no I have no discussion point on this, Commissioner. Thanks. I, None? I was getting ready for the next issue. Sorry. Next issue is you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's getting ready. <laughs> Mr. Moore? Um, okay, so all this was just a change order of what? Just, we looks we, like it just moving. We received a credit for, for okay. other work, and we applied that credit towards some additional work. Uh, so the dollar value of the contract remained unchanged. Okay. Mr. Moore? Aye. Mrs. Blair? Aye. Mrs. Bassey? Aye. <clears throat> Comments, reports, Mr. Cordell's administrator? Uh, commissioners, at this time I'd, I'd like to take uh, uh, an immediate executive session uh, to talk about a matter of potential litigation uh, and then reserve the right for some comments when we come back. Okay. Then I'll move for executive session. Second. Mr. Moore? Aye. Mrs. Vassey? Aye. Mrs. Blair? Aye. Okay, the commissioners have reconvened for the executive session.
uh, before I, I speak on uh, a brief issue, can we go back to uh, number 14? I understand the information is available now on number 14. Okay, just for clarification purposes for number 14, and I did misspeak, there were not, there were more than three bidders, there were five bidders. Um, I'll read the prices of the bids. It was Allegheny was 57,000, Trisco was 31,505. Who was? Trisco. Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> Burge was $37,735.20. TSC building was $49,850. Gene Reeser, I probably said the name wrong. That's okay. Okay, it's $60,100. Mm -hmm. And to be within the 3% of awarding the Trisco, 3% um, of the 31505 is $945. Who was in the three percent? No, 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 but I'm going to be watching Trisco. I mean, they're from Lima, Ohio, <laughs> coming out here to build, and, and here we are with a local firm making 37. The gas mileage alone, it sounds like to me, is going to be the sick. But hey, if they bid at 31 and, and we have to follow the law, then we have to follow the law. But I'm not. I mean, I'm afraid. I just we better not be getting any change orders on this one. Well, I'll tell you what. I agree with you, Commissioner. The other thing is the only thing I can point out is that Trisco Systems did this building, mm -hmm. so they're familiar with the area. Plus, they had a bit of an advantage because when the building belonged to Columbia Gas. They had looked the building over for the previous owners, so they had a little bit more knowledge of the building's uh, 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 composition and, and the work that may have been needed there. So okay. while I had, uh, that had nothing to do with us, but I did know that uh, Landing, when he was working for Columbia Gas, did have Trisco take a look at it when they were yeah. working here. That's outside of the county, so that may have been why they were able to shave their bid down. <coughs> but, but if you'd like, you know, you do have an option. The only option you really would have is we can go back and, and rebid it if you like. Uh, you know my feelings on using local vendors. I feel as strongly about it as you do, sir. Yeah, but if you go out and rebid it, that's a disadvantage to the others. Right. Well, not like that, but you've got bids ranging, ranging from just a little over 30000 all the way up to sixty. 60 so right. that's half. So apparently uh, that's their bid. Um, I, you know, and one of the things we may want to do with our prosecutor attorney, since we're going down this road now, and we've been down on the Justice Center, I, I would like to know the legality of simply saying certain work is not going to be bid outside the county, keeping it within the county. If you can buy Ohio, why can't you buy Lorain County? And that's another thing for you to add on to your list of I wasn't things. asking for additional work. I was just talking <laughs> questions out there. And, and you need and we, to get the we're, answer. And we're glad that you accepted this work and this responsibility. <laughs> I, yeah, if you could do that, I would uh, well, I'd, we, I'd support we, something we, like that. We actually set aside certain portions of the Justice Center for, for Lorain County vendors only. Yeah, well. Okay, well, I won't go there on the Justice Center. We had a prior project that we did similar work on. Thank you. Uh, to uh, set aside work only for Lorain County but vendors. That wasn't, I, I would look and like, what Commissioner Buller just said. Let's just see if we can, you can work on getting it so if we can. Uh, I will uh, write projects. a projects. I'll write a letter and ask for And we did a domestic steel policy where you couldn't have anything but domestic steel, and now we're, but you know, why not do the same thing here? You have to have domestic, Lorraine County domestic workers working on Lorraine County buildings. So I don't see. Well, do you want to hold this do, until you find out? No, I think we have to hurry up and move on this one because there's cracks. Is there is this foundation? I want to get issues? it under the weather. Yeah, because we'll be next summer if we don't do it now. The, right? the only thing I would suggest is that you know we would only exercise that kind of bid in an environment where there was enough competitive bidders within the county. Certain things we don't have enough. Yeah, you just put a number, five right. bids. You have to have at least five bids on the project. Okay. I don't care. Just find out what the prosecutor's office says. I'll we craft it. Have it. Return, I'll have an answer in a few weeks for you. I'm tired of sending this checks out of county. <clears throat> Any more discussion? And we're going to add in there not, not to exceed that amount, correct? Not correct. to exceed $31,505. Right. And if it does, I'm sure people are going to hear about it. Uh, <laughs> a question. When you read that, did you read uh, $505? Yeah. 
Well, when she said she just rounded off, it sounded like to me she was saying 31,000. Well, no, I wrote it down and I wrote it wrong. And I just wanted oh. it for my own purposes. I wrote down 30, $31,050. No, it's, it's 31,505. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner, just so you know about change orders in the posture we've taken, uh, on our larger project that will remain unnamed, uh, we've had a request for approximately 180 change orders, and today we've only brought two. Correct. Back to this You're board. doing a very good job okay, on the so building that we should name, which I, if you want to have that discussion the, right it's now. The, it's the unknown building. Ah, I'd like to name it. Right. Uh, so I'm never but, ready for that discussion. But uh, we, we're very aggressive with the change orders, and we've gotten we, a lot we, of support. Excuse me. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, you're not allowed to go on vacation again, because uh, when you come back, you get a little feisty. Uh, uh, Did yeah. you notice, Mr. Uh, uh, That's it. No more vacations hey, I was in, I was in the woods trying to find my inner soul, and I'm ready again. <laughs> <laughs> you found the name in the woods, too, huh? Yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, yeah, I couldn't help that. I know. <laughs> he didn't bag anything this trip, so he's, he's yeah. taking out the aggressive. I had, a, I had a shot, but I won't say who I was talking to on the cell phone, which ruined the whole hunt. <laughs> <laughs> it's the last time I'm talking to county employees. <laughs> but, but, uh, uh, we're aggressive on the change orders, and uh, when we finished the EMA and 911 project, we didn't have a, a lot of change you know, orders. No, I just right. lost all the animal supporter boats. You know that. <laughs> all the animal <laughs> rights guys are going to be sending me letters. Thanks. Talk about the justice center. Why don't you, you stay with the subject? Okay, I'm sorry. Is there anything else we have to discuss? Because we should go right back to this building. Okay, okay. number 14. Mr. Moore? No, well, is there any more discussion? Uh, did you already say that? Any more discussion? Mr. Moore? Aye. Mrs. Ms. Blair? Aye. Mrs. Barrett? Aye. That's with not to exceed. So. Right. Thanks. Thank you. Thank I, uh, you. All right. Sorry, sorry. No, back to your report. Thank you. Uh, I, I'll keep it very short and only address one issue uh, since we've been so long. Uh, about a year ago, uh, the Sheriff's Department uh, privatized, uh, went from, excuse me, uh, we had privatized uh, health care for the uh, inmates out at the jail uh, that was costing a, a qu quite a bit of money and the increases were substantial and the sheriff and his staff uh, took a uh, rather aggressive posture to, to bring it back in house after it had been privatized. You see the movies into privatization these days but sometimes that's not best. Uh, they took a chance that, that they could save the county money by bringing it back in house, a, a reversal of the process uh, so to speak. And I have a report here, and, and some of the staff people here, and I'd, I'd like to just throw some numbers out and then ask them to come up and tell you how well it's working. They, they went from 18-hour uh, coverage uh, to 24-hour coverage, uh, and they saved the county 372, roughly $372,000 over a Wexford contract. And the, uh, had they stayed in the 18-hour coverage, they believe they would have saved the county about $456,000 and some change by bringing it in-house and doing it ourselves. And they're doing a real good job with this. And this just shows that we can do these type of things if we sharpen our pencils and get aggressive with it. And so I, I see uh, Lieutenant Hammond out there. Would you just come up and... Uh, this, this, is, this is good stuff. And uh, I'm sorry that I, I'm bringing it up, but I think it needs to be, it needs to be looked at. It's worked out well. Um, we felt it's, uh, at some point the private industry would uh, try to take advantage of us, and that's exactly what they did. Sheriff let us step in crunch some numbers, bring some people back under the county control. And it's not just 300,000, because you gotta understand when you go into a contract with one of these companies, you're looking at three years. So we're looking at at least a million. And I think it's gonna project on through the years. That, I mean, it's just gonna keep going and going. And the money saved is gonna be tremendous. And the care is under the sheriff's control again, or it should be. Okay, a good job. It's, it's doing great. We, we, were also good job. Able, we were also able to aggressively utilize uh, uh, the county's leverage with, with, with regard to health care to get discounts at Elyria Memorial Hospital. So we, we, we partnered with the sheriff on doing this. So we're getting <coughs> substantial discounts uh, when we take the inmates in for, for health coverage that we weren't getting before, too. So uh, we're very pleased with that issue also. What do we have? In-house doctors and nurses, or how are we doing? Uh, the, nurses are, uh, the nurses and staff are county uh, employees. Uh, the doctors, dentists, they're all contracted. Uh, do a bidding process, a negotiation, and they're contracted services, up to three years. But that's it. They get and money, they're not no benefits. Mm -hmm. Then they're within the county too. Yeah, they're coming under the county's authority. Yeah. And the, the nurses and the, uh, the health and care administrator are county employees of the sheriff. Okay, sounds good. 
The, uh, the commission has supported this when the sheriff was doing it, so you're also part of that. It's just been a very good cooperative effort that's succeeded in saving a significant amount of money for the county. Thanks, commissioners. I'll conclude my remarks with that. Well, we have to thank the sheriff and his staff. Commend you for a good job. We actually give under budget. All right, that's what we like to hear. Under budget and of course on time. We gave, uh, we projected about $780,000. That's great. We came in at about 710 that's okay. good. And, and well, actually, if you go in there, last year we had to give money. We Wexford went over on the medical cost, and we had to put additional money into the budget last year for Wexford for the medical care. Yeah. Of course, the care exceeded what we had budgeted. Correct? Okay. Okay. As long as the inmates get their medical care. That is no county prosecutor's report this morning. Um, commissioner's report. Commissioner Vassy. Yeah, I just have one thing. Susan Moore from Domestic Relations sent a memo. And referencing bulk purchasing. Well, when Jean Hartman was here, we often talked about this and we discussed it and then Jen left and it kind of went by the wayside. So when Susan Ward's letter, her memo came up, it brought it back to mind and I'd like to work with Yvonne and John and Jim and uh, get some information together that we need for the process. And according to Yvonne's letter, we will probably save about 45 to 60 percent in bulk purchasing. So I think that we should head in that direction and see what we can do. It's not going to be something we'll be able to do overnight, but it's certainly worth looking into. You're talking about all the departments having their own supply accounts and everything? Is that what we're talking no, about? No, we're just talking. Go ahead, Yvonne. We're talking about papers, pencils, uh, files, things that er every department uses. Yes, you have a new purchasing director for our commissioners. Mary Jo and I spoke, and Jim and I had been speaking on this for a while, too. What we would probably do, as I spoke with Mary Jo yesterday, is try to get um, each department to tell us what they are through supplies. And what we would do is we would put this list together, and what we would do is bid these items out. And it would be like a catalog, just like any of the catalogs that the suppliers, do, the suppliers give to us. Um, they use, basically use only two catalogs, and they just change the cover on the catalogs to suit their company. And what we would do is we would bid those items out, and we would get the catalogs to the various departments. So when they got ready to order, like pencils and paper, I mean, not paper, we already do a paper bid, but when they order their pencils and pens, staples, post-its, the prices are there for us. That gives us an advantage to save money because we're doing bulk orders now. We don't need a storefront. We don't need anything. All we need is a catalog. And and to make sure that those departments are using that catalog and those items that are most popular through the county. So we're not trying to give them generic stuff. All we're trying to do is bring it together underneath one umbrella so that we can take advantage of those supplies that we use. You're talking about a Lorraine County catalog, not an outside catalog. No, this is a major catalog. There's only two major catalogs for supplies. And any company out there, be it you know, in, in Columbus or whatever, they use that same catalog. All they do is change the front of their catalogs. Oh, okay. And the, that's what we're going to do. But we're going, we're going to try to keep that business home. We're gonna, yeah. We're going to work. it out. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You know, we're going to try to keep it best as we can inside the county. We're going to use the economy of scale, the leverage of the, the, the large amount of supplies we purchase within the county. We do this now with food bids. Yes. Yeah, we do it okay, with food bids. Okay, so it's the same thing we're doing with food bids, right? Our paper bids, right. our cleaning supplies, so our calendars. It's just, a, it's just another evolution of that process right. that we're It's reading. volume buying. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. the, the, the very first thing is we need cooperation of the outlying departments exactly. to yes. tell us what their, their major routine supply purchases are. And we'll have to get the auditor's office involved, yeah. the purchasing department involved. Every department it's going to be a very cooperative effort that's necessary. Yeah. But we're not going to start this with a major thing where like no. MRDD and all the outlying right. uh, we'll, we'll agencies will right. start it within. And then like, we'll try to bring those agencies in, like sure. Children's Services in our building. Mm -hmm. We'll work with them to see if they want to jump aboard. And the more you know, outside agencies that we get, the better our discounts sure. will be on the bump ordering. <clears throat> so yeah, so we won't need anyone's supply you know, big storefront or anything like that because we'll have the catalog to, they can look through and do You'll it. You'll be doing it just in time type. Yeah, basically, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because that, I mean, we do that with the paper now. We order <laughs> a year's worth and then we call them when we need it, so they bring it when we Exactly, need it. and they hold those prices for us for a year. Exactly, okay. Anyway, I wanted to bring that up. So we can get started on it. Okay, good job. And that's all I have, thanks. Commissioner Blair? 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have three items I would like to uh, let the board know what's happening. Um, tomorrow, which is Friday, uh, November the 11th, NOACA is meeting in um, Geauga County. On their agenda is the outstanding issue between Oberlin City and Pittsfield Township. And I spoke to Howard Mayer, who is the director of NOACA yesterday. And on October the 8th, they had a full day um, discussion between the parties. And he said the discussion was very productive and that they have agreed to meet again on October the 23rd. And therefore, there will be no action taken on uh, November the 11th tomorrow uh, by request of the two parties. Uh, what did I say? November. I'm sorry. I just can't <laughs> wait till that day. <laughs> <laughs> Too shit. <laughs> um, oh, okay. So anyway, NOAC is not going to take any action tomorrow, and it appears again that there's some productive discussion which has transpired. So uh, I'm very excited about that because the concept of the uh, Ohio Dispute mm -hmm. uh, Commission uh, being involved in this came from the commissioner's office, so I'm happy that it's it's moving forward. And it might be the first time he was saying, I talked to him yesterday, that if it resolves this way, NOAC will probably use this form forever. Well, how do you like that? Yeah. yeah, how about that? <laughs> the second is that I, I've given you a, a sheet, just a preliminary and the National Resource Assistance Council. Uh, we were granted 1.7 million. This is for a three-county district, and this is the issue one, I think, that we voted on the green funds, uh, state issue, and uh, for uh, Lorraine, Medina, and Heron County, our allocation was $1.7 million. We've had two rounds within that because we've not been able to get rid of, get rid of all the money already. But we have a one point. Well, if we had 1.7 and we got 500 left, we, we have allocated 1.2 million, but because there's almost 500,000, $458,650 left, we have agreed to have uh, a round 1C. And so the commissioner's office here will be accepting applications until Friday, December the 6th at 4 p.m. We will meet on Friday, December the 20th at 9 a.m. to decide on those applications. And at our October 4th meeting, we approved $155,000 for the Lorraine County Metro Parks and $634,600 for the Medina County Park District. So we're doing pretty good on getting that stuff to the Howe Public Works Commission, which then filters the money back out to these to our respective District 9. And the third thing that I would like to say is that each of the commissioners received a copy from the, I believe you did, from the Howe Department of Transportation inviting us to a ribbon cutting on Thursday, October 17th at 1 p.m. This is for the Interstate 90 reconstruction and lane addition. Uh, four years ago, we had major discussion about the widening of I-90. I-90 has been widened, not only widened, but now we had the reconstruction and the lane addition, and ODOTs 3 and 12 are working together, and this ribbon cutting will be at uh, the, I read someplace, the Cahoon Road. Uh, uh, Cracker Bridge. Bridge. Yeah. So anyway, and then I would like to ask the commissioners if you would allow Rebecca Gray, the administrative coordinator for the Alliance, to tell us just briefly about the upcoming summit, which is the day before this, if you would. On October? 18th, the day after. Well, uh, you can make that announcement. Rebecca? That's fine. Thank you, commissioners. Just briefly, I wanted to remind you about the Lorain County Community Summit, the third annual on October 18th at the Spitzer Conference Center. It's gonna be um, one of the hallmark events that we can have here in the county for promoting us. Um, this year's summit is focusing on, some, focusing on some economic development issues going on here in the county, but also as part of the larger regional perspective. We have um, Ned Hill from the CSU Levin College of Urban Affairs coming in to give us a presentation on Ohio's competitive advantage, as well as the president and CEO of the Greater Akron Chamber who heads up an initiative called the Team NEO. Um, initiative, which is an economic program that works to put out 17,000 jobs in the next or in the very near future, not only just in Akron, but right, recognizing that we are part of a larger region. So they're working to do that on a regional basis. This will be the first time that they presented this publicly to anyone other than just in speaking with each other. So they've decided to bring this out and roll this out here in Lorain County. Um, an additional, I wanted to bring up to Yvonne that one of the breakout sessions that we're having is going to be the coordinator for the Ohio. Public, 
purchasing, bulk purchasing department, who's bringing this information up here to the cities and to the county to present to us. She's going to bring all the materials and everything that we need to do um, to get on board with that. So that might be something that you folks might want to explore with us that day. Thanks. Thanks, Rebecca. Thanks, Rebecca. Yes, you need to go out because she failed to mention that I'll be speaking there, so uh, 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 you, you, you missed the most important thing. <laughs> the, the, other issue, the other issue is uh, there's been a slight change to the agenda. I understand we're going to have some discussion from uh, another group there. Do you want to speak to that issue? That might be a good idea. It, this is a, a and, and constantly evolving thing. It's, it's evolving bigger and better, and, and, and that's great. Um, people are understanding the importance of coming together once a year to discuss these things and hopefully foster um, some further discussions here in the county. But I've been in contact with the, um, the government relations people at Ford Motor Company who have expressed a very strong interest in coming together with us in this program that day. They'd hoped to have a type of summit on their own that morning, actually coming together with the government officials and the elected officials here in the county that have a stake in what's going on in our economic development. Um, we said, well, why don't we just come together for a portion of the program because we're all after, after generally the same thing. And um, they were very receptive to that idea. Um, they'll be joining us for lunch. There's been some discussion as to, um, to whom we might have introduced some of this, the respected speakers. Um, I'd ask that, can I say, um, that Commissioner Moore would introduce um, some of the elected folks that they're bringing. Hopefully it depends upon the schedule in Washington, but there's been, um, been some indication that we'll have Senator Voinovich there as well as um, Sherrod Brown's office there. So it's really going to be a big day for the county. It's going to be a day to come together to, to not only learn but to feel good about what we're doing here. And I think that people around the region understand that some really good things are going on here in Lorain County, and we'd love to have you. And it's going to be good lunch, and Jim Cordes will be speaking. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Rebecca. Thank you. Okay, I have no report. <clears throat> Is there an old business? None. I'm none. New business? None. For correspondence? Move the reading be waived. Second. <clears throat> Mrs. Blair? Aye. Mr. Moore? Aye. Mrs. Vassley? Aye. Public <clears throat> comment? Anybody have anything public to say? Please keep your uh, words to three minutes. State your name. <clears throat> Even if we know you, Bob, we want to hear your name. I'm still. <laughs> I remain, Robert W. Kish. Uh, seven C's, concerned citizen, cost conscious concerned citizen, and I'm very pleased to hear today that they saved some money at the Sheriff's Department. Forgot to bring my golden candle with me. However, many years ago somebody said, a long time ago, you can tell by the content, never judge a man until you have walked in his moccasins. <laughs> What we spoke about, what Rebecca spoke about, had to do with the meeting last night, which I've spoken about before. Too many people here have turf wars in this county, and there's a turf war between other counties, when in reality, the problem needs to be solved by a community. And I learned a term last night about percolation, and uh, I'm interested in the percolation, how some things percolate to a point and not beyond that point. One of the things that came out, and I thought somebody might read the letter that Roxanne did the research on, was the uh, registered voters and the final people who voted through the years. And we go from 1998, from 46,415, 1998 uh, to 82, 260, and the last May primary, 25,163, which is a downward trend. And if you're wondering what OAV is, that's older adult voters. Uh, I am older, I do vote, and I do now vote in absentee. Because I have achieved 62 years of age plus. It says here that only through the active participation, that means voting or coming to these meetings, can the citizens' effective government be achieved. And the more effective and efficient we become, the more and the sooner we'll be able to pay off our $25 million debt. One dollar paid off equals two dollars when you consider the interest, and it's leaving the county, I believe. So keeping money 
in the area is, I think, important. I have here something that I clipped out of today's paper, and it has to do with Erie County. And I would like to see this happen in Lorraine County. The Erie County veterans are having a meeting at the Sandusky High School cafeteria. And the veterans, are there are going to be more of them here shortly, possibly, going to possibly Iraq. One just got killed yesterday. He wasn't even in Iraq. Uh, but the veterans, have been there, they've, they, and they will be there in the future. So if someone somehow, this is sponsored by the Erie County Veterans Service Commission, but it probably has to do also with their commissioners. Perhaps the commissioners can get together with the veterans group and have something similar to that here. One of the things I found is I've been going to these meetings and it came out in an article in a paper. It says any top secret CIA analyst or semi-competent -com therapist will tell you knowledge is important. Not when it is first becomes available, but when an audience, an audience, now here's secrets being kept or not being dispersed. We just heard about a meeting from Rebecca that hopefully a lot of people will attend. It's when that audience becomes available to absorb and act on that knowledge. Knowledge collected and not dispersed is a waste of time. The misery index, as we all heard about in the past, that defines Lorain County. In the past, Lorain County was a thriving community. Today I read something that I was sort of pleased to see and I wondered about the Grove site. The Grove site is not being called what it should have been called. The Black River... Landing. Landing. It's more appropriate. It describes where it's at. And thank you. Thanks, Bob. I'm only going to say a few words. I want to thank Betty Blair and the commissioners for the letter that was sent to KPS. At noon, I'm going to protest at the Pearl Street Gate with some of the union people that were dumped by REP and RTI. And I, there's going to be some representation from uh, Congressman Brown's office. Maybe uh, the, Senator Armbruster is supposed to send someone. So this is going to actually try to get word to KPS and the hunts that dumping people with disabilities is not the right way to go. And you've stressed that. I can't thank you enough. I'm very proud to be from Loring County because you were the boldest of all. And I, I, I do thank you. Thank you, Jim. Thanks. Shirley R. Johnson, Oberlin. Uh, as a follow-up to what Rebecca Gray said, I'd like to remind you that in Oberlin, sponsored by the League of Women Voters and by Design Vision, an outfit over in Oberlin, um, we have had a series of meetings about planning. Um, I, can't, I can't read this very well in this light. Uh, last night we had one on economic development. Ron Twining has been attending most of these meetings. All have been informative. I'm sorry that many, that more county people have not attended them because they've covered information and analysis that would have been helpful, been helpful to all of us. Thank you, Shirley. Anybody else? Seeing none, I move to adjourn. Second. Mr. Moore? Aye. Mrs. Blair? Aye. Mrs. Massey? Aye. We're adjourned.